Good afternoon and welcome to Jeannie's World this afternoon. Well, Miles picked me up this morning and we went to the food bank. And uh, no bread, no cakes. I'm sorry, we're out. Usually that's all we get is bread and cakes. What our water? I don't know how nutritious those things are. But today they gave us meat. So that was a good thing. I remember I asked Miles one time, why are you always coming at my house for supper? And he says, you have food. And then I showed him the food bank. He didn't even know food banks existed. And he needed a food bank. I don't need the food bank, but I go in company with Miles. And then we ran off to our father's closet to see if we could find anything unique for the flea market. Found a couple of things. And um, then we went and, and looked at another uh, shop and we didn't find anything. But it's a nice outing. What do we spend? We had a budget we had to spend. But it doesn't... Mm, can't think of the word. But, you know, we look for good deals that we can pass good deals to people. One thing about it, the flea market stuff that we sell is not high cost. Because we'll look at something and say, what would I pay for this? And if that's what I would pay for it, then basically that's what I would charge because I'm a cheapo anyway. But I want to talk about Miles. And I don't want you to think in one way at all that I am talking negative about him. Because I'm not. You know, Miles is a survivor. He was working for his brother and his family for many years. And that's his employment history, take, being taken care of by his family. And then his brother went out of business when the oldest brother got into a motorcycle wreck and died. Then a couple of years ago, his mom died. And she worked in the flea market. So there was plenty of things in the house for him to sell to take care of himself. But I can't say what his fear is. I can only speculate what is his fear. You know? And I'm not even going to try. But anyway, I had talked about before about the tattered white feather I found that had upset me so badly. Well, after I found the feather that day, he got hit in the head by his tent and he puts it together with a rod iron prongs. His, his tent is different than everybody else's at the flea market. His is self-designed and it's more efficient than everybody else's. And if you're going to spend a lot of money for, you know, shade at the flea market, you should look up his design. It's very efficient. And he holds it down with 25 pound weights on all four corners. Then that's bad enough that he gets hit in the head, gets a headache. But that's not the end of the feather. I can't remember all the things that happened, but I'm remembering the main ones. The next one, he had to put his car in the shop. And you could just see the anxiety of uh, his face. How is he going to work? The, the work is his survival. The flea market is his survival. And um, he doesn't get SSI or anything like that. 
straight flea market, straight junk, whatever, wherever he picks up his, his money, that's what he gets. He's a very honest man. He doesn't do anything illegal. He's got, I love Jesus on my hat and he loves Jesus. But anyway, I think I lost my train of thought. So anyway, he's really upset about his car being broken. How long is it going to stay in the shop? I said, well, I guess we'll have to use my car. Oh, your car is not big enough. I can't get anything to the flea market in your car. And he was getting really frustrated and aggravated. And then, it, you know, it's go big or don't go at all. Then he's go thinking, he says, well, better to go small than not at all. But they got his truck in, they got it out in one day, which, which was really good. So he has the bad along with the good. So I can't think of the other things that happened. But the next thing of major proportion happened was his water well broke. So now he has no water. So while we were out today, he bought him some new clothes, and his remark was, well, I have new clothes when my other ones get dirty. And I started to say, Miles, you need to wash those clothes before you wear them. But before I could say that, he, he got off, and I wanted to punch him out. I can't wash my clothes. I don't have any water. And, and, and Miles... He repeats things four or five times, and he stays on this little tangent he gets. And he, he can stay on it for five minutes or for 30 minutes. He doesn't get off of it. And uh, you can't get aggravated with him. Because I think if you watch him closely, you can tell, I hate to say it, he's kind of on the retarded end. That's why his family always take, had taken care of him. And now he's walking alone. And he's doing the best he can. When he says, I'm doing the best I can, it's true. But I tell him, he doesn't have to say that. He doesn't have to defend himself. He does what he does. And that's what he does. So basically... What I'm trying to get around to, this well is going to cost Miles $2,000. So I'm sitting, I'm thinking, and I talked to my daughter. And I said, you, you know, what, last Sunday we made $38. We worked a lot of hours. We left the house. We we left the house at four in the morning and we didn't get home till four in the afternoon for $38. He has to give me half and he has to pay, we pay, I pay half of this space, which was $16. So that doesn't leave us very much money. But Wednesday we had a good day, but Saturday we had another bad day. And uh, I tell Donna, I says, I think I need to quit. But if I quit, I think Miles is going to feel like I'm deserting him and I'm walking off and leaving him. I can't work for nothing because the money I make <coughs> is really helpful to me because it stretches my money further into the next month where Miles is busy struggling for the next day. And um, she said, are you enjoying it? I'm, yes, I'm enjoying it. And we get a lot of compliments on Miles' booth since I started, and he's picked up more business since I, I'm helping him. But he's still not making enough money. And where is he going to find the $2,000? To fix his water well. So anyway, the conclusion we came into was 
that I keep working for miles, but of the money I make, I take 10% out and I put it to the side for hard times. Well, that's good intentions, but it's not good enough for the hard times he's facing right now. So, what I am saying, or what I am asking is, could you spare a few dollars to help to go toward Miles' water well? He's getting his water from me. He's taking a shower here, so that's good for now. But um, a man's home is his castle. Uh We've made a lot of progress at the end of February in the in, in, in the beginning of, well, it is still the beginning of March, so we didn't do anything in March. But in February, I helped him by um, getting him food stamps and getting him a doctor. He has a doctor appointment on Monday. Yay. And... I helped him get in the waiting line for his dental work. He has really bad halitosis. So I'm always on him for that. And I, I hate telling him, Miles, do something about your breath. But sometimes you can get three feet of him and he knocks you away. So that's not good for the customers. He is a very gentle man as in kind, gentle, and he's a gentleman too. You see, I find this hard because there are some people who ask for help and they really don't need it. You know, Miles has always relied on his mother and his mother passed away two years ago. The house is in probate. And so when I went to help him to get all these services that he needed, they classified him as homeless. He has a roof over his head, but he has the classification of homeless. Makes me sad. But, you know, his mother, his father, his brothers, they really didn't teach him how to fend for himself. He does what he knows. He helped his mother in the flea market, and that's what he knows. He's very friendly. He's very loving. So, excuse me for asking. And if you don't help, I understand. And I got a very small network, so. But share. And you can pay me with Cash App. And I will put that in my description as soon as I find the password. And uh, God bless you. And stay safe.